Hey guys, Tech Relay here, and today we're going to be looking at the facts that you definitely need to know about Nokia's new flagship phone, the Nokia 8. Now, Nokia started off by making phones that looked like this. They then made a phone that looked like this, which couldn't do this. They then remade that phone, and then they started making some Symbian phones that looked like this. Then Microsoft acquired them, and they started doing Windows Phone phones, which looked like this. And then they sort of stopped making phones for a while and you didn't really see anything from them. Of course those Windows phones weren't very successful, but here they are back again making some smartphones. This year they've made quite a few Android ones already, the 3, 5, 6 and 8, and here's another one adding to the list. Now this is Nokia's first flagship, like really ever, so it's really good to see a company like Nokia getting into the smartphone game. The first thing you guys should know about these phones is the specs are really good. They run on Snapdragon 835 chips, which are pretty much the flagship chips nowadays. The Samsung Galaxy 8 uses it, and pretty much every flagship coming out uses it, even the OnePlus 5. It also has 6GB of RAM, which is more than enough for today's world, as most phones are still coming out with around 4GB, which is still more than enough. The battery is a 3090 million power one, and it really looks like it will get the job done, and it can power the display, as it does have a smaller display than others. So yeah, the specs on this phone do look really impressive, and I think this phone will run really well when compared to other phones such as the Galaxy S8. The second thing is the display. Now this display is a 5.3 inch Quad HD one, and it looks really nice. Of course it doesn't have the slim bed of bezels that are sort of new around 2017, like we're seeing them in LG phones such as the sort of leaked LG V30 which actually looks really nice, but I kind of like seeing a phone that goes away from the current trends and it sticks with the traditional ways that we know that work. The camera on this device also looks like it will be really good. On the back it has two 30 megapixel sensors so it is going with the dual camera trend and I'm fine with that, they are really good cameras and they definitely look very good. The front facing camera is also a 13 megapixel camera and both front and back are capable of recording 4K video which is really good to see. Also, another feature they are introducing is called Bothy. This means that you record the front and back at around the same time, and you can live stream it to people. This means you're going to be more connected than ever, and you can show yourself while also in the area that you are in. This is really good for creators and just people that want to share what they were doing, and it's good just for sharing things with your family, as you can easily share with other people. Looking at the design of this phone, it looks like a really nice device. It looks really solid and well made, and I just definitely can't wait to have a look around it and feel it. And it looks pretty durable, and I really think it's very good. It's 7.9mm thin, which is really slim, and it means that the device can be very versatile. Of course, it doesn't have the slim bezels, but that, what that means is it does have the fingerprint scanner on the front. I much prefer this thing to having it at the back, as it's much easier to reach for me, and I definitely prefer the fingerprint scanner on phones such as the Huawei P10 to the Samsung Galaxy S8. So I'm really excited that they are keeping it in the front, as most phones are going to the back. It's even rumoured that the iPhone is not going to have a fingerprint scanner at all, which I'm not too sure about, but I think it's still better than having it on the back. At launch, this phone is meant to be £550, which is $708 US dollars and $891 Australian dollars. Of course, this is far from cheap, but for the specs that you're getting, it is pretty much a flagship device, and it's around the same price as those flagship devices. Of course, in Australia, it's probably actually going to end up being a lot more more just because of the high prices as phones like the Galaxy SA are around $1200 which is really expensive. Now guys that's been my sort of preview video of the Nokia 8. If you did enjoy it make sure to leave a like and tell me so and I'll do more phones that are coming out in the next few months. So if you did also enjoy the footage I'm getting with my Panasonic G7, tell me down below and I may make a review on it. I'm really enjoying shooting with this camera and it is a great camera. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. It would be really appreciated. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.